when I look at my career, there's a lot of fights that kind of stand out to me and, um, you know, all for different reasons, of course. But one that was really kind of a sentimental fight for me was the, the first Jens Pulver fight. I, I was, uh, you know, it was kind of a monumental time for the lightweight fighters. You know, Jens, who was a UFC champion, coming down to 145 pounds. And, and uh, it was the first time I'd fought in my hometown in the Arco Arena which is the, you know, the, the big arena there is like 14,000 people and they had done a countdown show and, and made a big production of it. And, um, and then the fight was a 25 minute war. And I feel like people hadn't really seen my stand up to that point because I was finishing fights really quickly. And, and so I got to showcase a lot of stuff that people hadn't seen. And, and it was uh, the first time I'd fought someone that I had known and respected and looked up to as much as Jen's, um, you know, as, as much as I had with Jen. So, um, it was just a cool event altogether. It was in my hometown. Uh, I won the fight, but it was a tough fight. And, uh, you know, it kind of put the featherweights on the map. I'm coming up on a, on a huge title fight, you know, the biggest one in my career. This is for the UFC World Championship, and I've been in huge title fights before. You know, I, I feel like most of my career has been for some sort of wor world championship, whether it be on a lower level or uh, at the highest level. And, this is something that I'm used to, you know, I've, I've been hovering at the top for about seven years now, either the champion or close to it. So uh, it just seems like, you know, that experience of being there is, is just regular to me and, and I'm going to seize this opportunity. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's something that I've wanted for a long time to be a UFC world champion and I kind of, in my own head, made a case that the WC and the UFC were the same thing because it was all the top fighters. but. You know, now is the is the time to really uh, staple that that uh, title down and, and say, okay, this is something that I that I've accomplished and add it to the list. And it's a great time because I'm at my most competitive weight. When I first started fighting, you know, people are always asking about, you know, why all of a sudden the drop to 135s. But uh, when I first started fighting, there was no 135 pound weight class. There wasn't even a 45 pound weight class. California hadn't even legalized mixed martial arts. It wasn't on TV. There's no Ultimate Fighter. Um, there wasn't big paydays. You know, I was doing it. I was fighting two weights above uh, what I am now. I was, you know, coming out of my college wrestling season where I was 133 pounds, and um, now's a time where 135s are featured. It's uh, in the UFC. There's there's a lot of money involved. There's a lot of um, incentives involved and, and I've been doing it because I love it and, and I'm at the most competitive weight now and the best time in, in, uh, in my career. The mental toughness that, uh, that I've shown through the years, you know, people talk about the Mike Brown fight. You know, the first round I broke my right hand in two different spots and I couldn't use it and then in the third round I dislocated my thumb. And uh, I don't know if you can teach that necessarily. I feel like I definitely set the bar high. I mean, somebody that is teetering whether they should continue or, or quit and maybe watch that fight and was inspired by it may, may stick in there. So I imagine that you can kind of learn that, but um, to deal with the pain and, and endure and, 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 you know, push past things, you know, I don't know if you can teach that necessarily. You know, in the Jose Aldo fight, that was the most pain I've been in. You know, I was basically getting hit with a bat in my leg, you know, for 20, 20 some odd minutes and not being able to move it. And uh, that was extremely painful and it was pretty hopeless. So fighting against uh, a hopeless situation is not something that sounds real inviting to people, but I don't know why I just didn't want to quit, I guess, you know, <laughs> I don't think I have it in me. The merge with the WC and the UFC is something that I've been waiting for, you know, it's, it's something I've pushed for and uh, Dana White and Lorenzo have had to hear me behind closed doors, you know, push for it for a long time and um, it just makes sense, you know. They, I feel like just pushing one brand is the way to go. I, I, the, the UFC has built such a great name and, and has so much momentum that, uh, you know, it, it was cool that they were trying to build a whole nother brand, but everything being the same, it was the same team of people um, running both organizations. It was the same bosses signing the checks. 
and uh, it just made sense to have the credit and the international exposure and um, all the benefits that the the UFC has, you know, behind the brand. So um, I was really happy for the for the merger. I feel like what the WC did do is is give the lightweight fighters a chance to really showcase what they're all about, and um, being the guy that was kind of pushing the brand from the beginning and doing the PR and and um, you know building the thing from the ground up, you just see how ignorant folks were about the sport and how uneducated they were about the lightweight fighters. So um, we really got to to showcase why the lightweight fighters are so exciting and, and what's great about the, the sport in all different levels. And, and so I, I knew that you know, we'd, we'd done our part and that there's no way the UFC could turn their back on the weight classes. So now the, the strike force was bought up by the UFC. In the past, Pride had been bought up by the UFC. The WC and the UFC have merged. And um, there's some positive and some negative things about that. First thing is, Zufa is the best company in the world to promote fighters. So if you're a top level fighter and you're not on a Zufa production, you're missing out. You're missing out on exposure. You're missing out on uh, the full credit and on a lot of great matchups because most of the fighters in the world that uh, have clout are part of the Zufa production. So um, I would say it's a good thing for the Strike Force fighters to be now under the Zufa umbrella. But we still want that competition out there. So um, there's, there's not competition as far as uh, bidding on fighters and things like that. But uh, worst case scenario, um, you know, at least we're in the good hands. You know, Dana and Lorenzo love the sport. They love the fighters and, and are working towards building it to be the biggest brand in the whole world. And, and along with that comes a lot of opportunities. So I think it's good. I've been thinking a lot about the expansion of our team, Team Alpha Male, and um, I'd like to run it just like a franchise team. You know, we represent uh, a city, city of Sacramento, and I'd like to get some people behind and, and have some money to maybe recruit some heavier weights and, and pay some of the coaches a little bit better and, and continue to develop the team. You know, we're holding a seminar coming up here and we're going to have a golf tournament to raise some funds and and things like that it's it's uh until now it's been a lot of guys sacrificing and putting their efforts into being part of this team i think it's time now to take it to another level and and continue continue to expand and and grow the the team and, and create more opportunities so part of that is a uh, uh, a facility that i'm building and Northern California in the northern coast. It's about three and a half hours from Sacramento. It's a uh, it's a building on Highway One. It's an old building built in like early 1900s, and um, I'm outfitting it as a private retreat. It's like less than a mile from the ocean as a, a jog jog to the ocean. It's got uh, you know sand dunes and and like beaches that are just basically private and. And it's got a mountain with uh, 2,500 feet elevation that we can go do some cross training up in there. And, and there's 450 people in the town, so it's really isolated. And um, we're, we're looking to do a lot of cool stuff like that. We've also got a place in Mexico that uh, we're going to go, you know, hopefully when it's real cold in the winter, we can go to Mexico. When it's real hot in the summer, we can go to Point Arena up in California. So it's trying to be unique and have fun. Growing up, I was always uh, inspired by uh, boxers. You know, when you look at fighting, especially when I was younger, that was it. You know, the toughest guys in the world were the boxers, and that was before mixed martial arts had really made its mark on the world. And um, some of my favorite boxers were, you know, of course, Mike Tyson, Tommy the Gun Morrison, Prince Nassim Hamid, and uh, my favorite of all time is Roy Jones Jr. I think he's a uh, He's a guy that I always watch and, you know, talk about a, a specimen as far as athleticism. That guy has athleticism like, like no one else and, and was able to put on a show and be dominant and, and have fun with the sport. So um, Roy Jones Jr. is a guy that I've always loved. Uh, right now, my favorite mixed martial artist, uh, I think there's a lot of different fighters I look up to for different reasons. But uh, Sakuraba is a guy that I looked at 
from uh, a person starting in the sport and just was like intrigued with. He was a guy that had a strong wrestling base, was a great striker, and just had fun. You know, he's always doing creative stuff like double punches and and uh, I don't know if you guys ever saw the fight with him and Hoist Gracie, the special rules one where he got to use the gi. You know, Gracie got to use the gi and there's no time limit and and Sakuraba was like pulling his pants down and putting his shirt over his head and stuff like that. That was pretty funny. But uh, I like his mentality, you know, he fights with a lot of heart and has a lot of fun with it and he's really skilled. So um, one of the best fights of his was when he got kicked out of Pride because they wouldn't let him fight anymore so he went over to Dream. He fought that Russian dude and the Russian guy knocked him out but he was head was like outside of the ring so the Japanese guy like shakes him and like calls time out and pulls him back in the ring, lets him wake up and then he he wakes up and and just battles back and ends up tiring the Russian guy out and beating him. I think he submits him after he knocked him down. So that's a fight that I always look at and be like, that guy's the man. <laughs>